Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, it's time for another video. And today, I wanna to do a review of a magic convention. I review magic products, I review streaming platforms. <laughs> Why not review a magic convention? And I wanna give a shout out and a review to the South Tyneside Magic Convention. Now, uh, it happened about a week ago, and uh, I was there the entire time. It was me, and it was Matt, and it was Ryland. Ryland was booked to uh, to be on the gala show on the Saturday night, and I was booked to do a lecture on uh, uh, the Saturday and do a, a product launch as well. And I gotta tell you, I was super impressed with the South Tyneside Magic Convention, like super impressed. Uh, the last time I went there was probably over a decade ago. I remember the last time I went there was um, when they booked Paul Daniels. And I had a great time there. I remember seeing um, Jasper Blakely live. He was performing as all of his various different characters, Cock Off and Uncle L, the kid is Pell. You know, he was, um, he was phenomenal. And it was a great convention uh, when I went there before. Uh, hadn't been for a long time, so didn't really know what to expect. And since COVID, uh, the South Townside Convention, on purpose, have actually kind of scaled back a little bit. It's still a three-day convention, uh, and there's still a hell of a lot going on, but they've scaled back in terms of the numbers. Uh, I think they capped it at 100 people. Uh, and I know that they sold out. I know there were other people trying to buy tickets as well. Now, I'm sure they're going to scale it up over time, but it was it was a very exclusive convention. Now, I've been to small conventions before where there's no life and there's no atmosphere and there's no sort of pow. That is not the case with the South Tyneside Convention. Even though it was small, there was so much energy in that convention. And the other thing is, because there's only 100 people there, plus lecturers and, and dealers and so on and so forth, it meant that you were hanging out and sessioning with big names in magic, just like constantly. So how it's set up is you've got the customs house and the customs house is where 90% of everything took place. And then there's kind of the convention hotel, which is where I was staying with Ryland. And uh, that, that's where kind of people are hanging out in the bar until late. And, and, and that's where a couple of other events took place as well. So everything took place between these two events. And first of all, I want to give a big shout out to the organization team, uh, the people that were organizing it. Too many names to mention, but they were phenomenal. This ran very, very smoothly. Now, I know I've run events for years. I am fully aware that there were probably a million things going wrong or a million things happening. But if that was the case, you didn't see any of it because it was uh, it was very, very smoothly run. And uh, I very much appreciated that. And and like I say, every night in the bar, people were there till one, two o'clock in the morning, sessioning, hanging, but you were, you were there with the big names in magic. You were there with some huge names. And uh, you know what? That's that's what the session always used to be. Back when the session was in Gloucester before it moved to London, the, the session was so intimate and it was amazing that the focus was on sessioning with each other, which at the end of the day is what magic's all about. And it's kind of lost its way a little bit. There's still an element of sessioning that takes place at the session convention, but it is more commercial uh, now, but uh, the South Townside Convention, it reminded me of what the session always was when it was in Gloucester. Everybody was super friendly. Everybody was there just because they loved magic. It's probably the friendliest magic convention I've ever been to. Um, everybody was super nice. Now in terms, but, but even though there were only 100 people and it's a smaller convention, you wouldn't think it when you look at the lineup. So first of all, on the Friday, uh, the Friday kicked off in the evening with kind of like a family magic show. And I, I have to tell you, that family magic show was superb. Uh, I'm not going to run through every individual act. I'm not going to run through every single lecturer. A uh, couple of shout outs that I want to uh, I want to give a shout out to. The first is Danny Hunt and Steph from Amethyst. I've always been a huge Amethyst fan. Um, their illusion show is second to none. It was great to see Danny and Steph, as well as doing illusions, doing sort of more 
smaller front of cloth stuff as part of their set as well. I say smaller front of cloth stuff. Their smaller front of cloth stuff was probably bigger than most people's props that they use in their act. But it was it was smaller, pattern driven, uh, with a big emphasis on Steph, which is great because she's a fantastic performer in her own right. And yeah, they had the illusions. I mean, did they ever? I mean, the fire cage to open up looked amazing. And they produced a helicopter at the end of the show. That's right. They produced a helicopter at the end of the show. I mean, damn, right? Uh, but, but outside of those two illusions, you know, we got to see a different side of, uh, of, of Amethyst, which we don't normally see at conventions. And I very much appreciated that. They were phenomenal. Also going to give a shout out to, uh, um, to, uh, oh my gosh, I've forgotten their names. Uh, the comedy double act. You see them an awful lot in Blackpool and I've completely I've forgotten their names. Uh, somebody helped me by putting their names in the comments down below. I can't remember. Matt had never seen them before. I've seen them so many times. And uh, Ryland had never seen them before. And it was fantastic sitting in the audience next to, next to Ryland and next to Matt as they were watching for the first time the absolute chaos and hilarity unfolding on stage in front of us. Uh, they are just a throwback to a golden era of variety entertainment. They infuse magic with comedy and slapstick absolutely perfectly they really do and i'm hoping that michael flashes the name of this act up at the screen down below i can't believe i'm getting old that's what it is i'm getting old um but just one of my favorite acts of all time and uh you know graham shaw give a big shout out to graham shaw as well a lot you know the the uh, family entertainer of the year from a couple of years ago phenomenal performer owner and head of uh, of magic box showing how it's done and then some so the, uh, the the family show on the first night was great we then had a product launch back at the convention hotel i gotta say something about this product launch by the way i've got to say something so i launched a couple of products or talked about a couple of products that were coming up soon which was great but then uh, you have to talk about Michael Murray. Now, anybody who knows Michael Murray knows that he is one of the best mentalists in the world today. He is absolutely phenomenal. And what he did, oh my gosh, what he did. Um, he, he launched three new items and I'm going to be doing a review show on a couple of them uh, soon. So I'm not going to say too much, but as far as I'm concerned, one of these effects, Michael has solved the the force of a number on a dice without using a loaded dice i'm genuinely serious like the method he's come up with is genius imagine this imagine taking a dice throwing it it's not loaded there's no switch and then at your command you can force any number on that dice and i'm not even kidding and then you can force a different number and a different number it is that clean it is that direct and he had me up and he was performing it to me and just blowing me away. I mean, I had no idea how that was done. Like, no idea how that was done. He completely fooled the hell out of me. Um, that was probably one of the best tricks I've seen in a long time. And then he followed that up with uh, an incredible concept where he predicted a thought of card. Uh, and there was no mental calculations, no mental gymnastics. I know that Michael has been very well known for really complicated stuff in your head and springboard principles and stuff like that. None of this. Literally, he's designed a method that allows you to have somebody apparently have a free choice of any card and you're able to predict the card that they think of. And blown away was doesn't even begin to describe. I was just completely blown away no idea whatsoever um just really really great really really awesome those two new releases he was uh, he was launching he was also launching um a kind of a, a product which does what a vibrated the amverdi die or the pro mystics die the real die whatever you want to call it uh, he's released a product that's not electronic that basically achieves the same thing but without using a die and i thought that was brilliant i thought that was a really clever approach to the plot and i know a lot of people have tried to do that you know anytime we can get away from those vibrating dies is great because everybody does it right now and um, yeah, yeah, his product, that was one of the highlights. Michael's product launch was one of the highlights of the convention for me. I mean, just, just wow, right? Okay, so that's the Friday night. Then everyone got drunk in the bar until the early hours of the morning and showed each other card tricks. Danny, Danny Webb, 
No, bear with me. I'll get to it. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name. <laughs> Clive Webb and Danny Adams. That's it. Clive Webb and Danny Adams. I'm so sorry. I'm an idiot. I really apologise. Uh, that's the act that are uh, one of the funniest double acts in history, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, I digress. Saturday, packed day. It basically all took place at the Customs House. Great venue for a convention, by the way. It's got a theatre, but as well as the theatre, it's also got um, uh, a lecture area There's uh, in the same area where the lectures are taking place. There's the dealers. There were only two dealers. Uh, there was uh, Dietrich. Uh, you had Mike Sullivan there on behalf of Dietrich. Uh, but also you had Magic Box obviously, as they sponsor and organise the event. Um, the nice thing about Magic Box as a dealer is they're one of the few dealers now in the world that bring everything. You know, a lot of dealers, when they go to conventions, they'll bring a very limited range of stock, but uh, they bring everything. They just bring everything. So there was a load of new stuff, load of stuff that people hadn't seen before, which was great. Um, anyway, the, the, the dealers were awesome. Everyone was spending way too much money. Uh, but then you've got the, the lecturers, and I'm not going to spend all the time talking about all the individual lecturers. I will say this, every single lecturer at this convention was brilliant. And it was such an eclectic range and an eclectic mix of lecturers. You have comedy legends like Paul Zenon, uh, and, and, you know, you have just... just incredible sleight of hand and really weird creative ideas like uh, Tobias Dostal. Like I was lecturing at this thing and I just felt completely out of my depth. I'm like, what am I doing here? You've got, you like, you had people like um, John Archer and you had people like um, R. Paul Wilson just introducing the acts. And I'm like, why am I even here? You've got Paul Wilson that's just here as a punter. What can I offer at this convention that he can't do? I tell you what, I'll give up my spot. I've got a nice little uh, afternoon slot for my lecture. Paul, would you like to take it? By all means, you take the bloody slot. Uh, I mean, that's just that. You had people that were just paying to have a ticket at this convention that are absolute legends in magic that would top the bill as a lecturer at any other convention. That's what I mean about this convention being just so intimate and so awesome. It was fantastic. I'm not going to go through individual lectures. I will tell you that every single lecture was on point. Um, Michael Murray's lecture was fantastic. He was talking about creativity in magic, and it was one of, uh, almost like a creativity workshop. Um, just every lecture was great. Um, Alex McAleer, Alexander Marsh, he had a fantastic lecture all about billets and, and, and how to use billets correctly. You know, if you're a mentalist, that was one of the best mentalism lectures that I've ever seen. Every lecture hit home, hit hard. It was great. There was close-up shows as well. The close-up shows were really good. Then you had the gala show on the Saturday evening. What a great gala show. It was quite a... First of all, it was it was compared by John Archer. Need I say more? Um, probably the best compare in the world right now. Um, you know, you know that when you have John comparing a magic convention, it's going to be incredible. You know that he's going to bring the fun, he's going to bring the magic, he's going to bring the ukulele, and he's going to do a great job. And he did. And um, what was refreshing about the gala show, or different, I don't want to say refreshing, um, because I love illusion acts, but what's interesting is it was a big theatre, and there were no real illusion acts, there were no real big acts that filled the stage other than Ryland. His act was the only one that filled the stage. Everyone else, it was kind of patter acts. Um, and, but, but that worked. That worked and it worked really well. It was a great, uh, it was a great show. Um, there were so many great magicians on there. Tobias opened up the gala show. Tobias Dostal by doing some of his classics that we know him for. Some of his shadow work, his vanishing phone effects and stuff like that. Um, you had, uh, is it Juan, uh, Juan Colon, Colos, Juan Colos, uh, who brought out Heartbeat, uh, with Illusionist, and, um, he, he had the, what I consider to be the act of the convention. Uh, uh, his lecture was fantastic, phenomenal. He's got this routine with five cards, uh, that just fooled the ever-loving crap out of me. Uh, but, forget about the lecture, his act on stage was just the weirdest, craziest, most bizarre thing I've ever seen involving linking rings and dreadlocks. And I don't really want to say anything else. 
because I don't want to spoil it for people. What I will tell you is go out of your way to see this act. This act was one of the most unique acts I've ever seen. And it, it, it had comedic moments, but it was also very serious. It was very magical. Uh, it was just great. And it had literally everyone in the audience on the edge of their seats. So that, that was a phenomenal act. Uh, Paul Zenin closed the show, uh, as you would expect. I mean, he is a legend, right? And, and a masterclass in how to deliver comedy. You know, there were a couple of linking ring bits that took place earlier on. I don't know if it was a, this was a planned bit by Paul Zenin, uh, but even, uh, or, or if it was thrown in off the cuff because there were a couple of linking ring routines. But I love the fact that he brought out the linking rings and he just did a gag with them that was really funny. Uh, that worked for the lay people in the audience and for the magicians in the audience as well. Um, just brilliant, brilliant. Alexander Marsh, his, his PK touch routine uh, was just second to none, second to none. And I love the fact that the routine that he lectured earlier on in the day, he actually performed in the evening. You know, you see that he performs his own material. That's wonderful. Uh, and then obviously we had Ryland opening the second half. Um, I, I'm just super proud of Ryan. I am so super proud of Ryland. Like, he's 11 years old and he gets on stages in front of magicians. Let's make no bones about it. I would, I would be shitting bricks if I was booked to go on a gala show in front of magicians at a magic convention on the same bill as people like John Archer, Alexander Marsh, um, you know, uh, Tobias Dostal, and you're on the same bill as people like that. I would be shitting bricks and he walked out and he did 15 minutes. He did his Harry Potter act. And then he did uh, his uh, Venom Cube routine. And uh, that's all it was. It was just a 15 minute act, something like that. And I, he killed it. He absolutely killed it. The amount of people that were coming up to us in the bar afterwards saying, oh my God, Ryan was amazing. You must be so proud. Everyone was going up and giving him high fives. I, I, he was. And you know, uh, the thing with Ryan, he's 11. He's going to get better obviously. And this is not the video to talk about, you know, stuff that's been said in Facebook groups about him. I'm not going to get into that now. But what I will say is that kid rehearses and practices a lot more than people realize. And when you see him on a stage like that, and you see him performing his heart out and absolutely commanding an audience at the age of 11, and that's down to the stage time that Ryland's had, it's amazing. He held his own and then some on that gala show. And I couldn't be more proud. In fact, I was able to get the footage of Ryland performing at the South Tyneside Magic Convention. And so I'm going to play that for you now. I'm going to play you the footage. Here's Ryland's act at the South Tyneside Magic Convention. So if you weren't there and uh, you like Ryland, you like, you, like, you like Ryland or you like how he performs, Here's his act from the South Tyneside Magic Convention, opening up the second half. Use the spell. 
Antichrist. Remember, it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Some of those moments 
starting with the cube at the top and in the middle. You see, there are multi-millions of combinations, and no one could ever predict exactly how that cube could have ended up being mixed. Now, Tom, would you like to mix that cube one more time, or is that it? That's it? Okay. Please pass me the cube. Now, what I did tell you is that these cubes actually match. Look, sign for one matches. Sign for two also matches. Sign of three matches. Sign of four matches. Sign of five matches. And you're not going to believe this, but sign of six matches as well. Thank you. Okay, so the Sunday was just as good. Uh, the Sunday was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, again, you know, the, the, the two dealers were there. Oh, by the way, the other thing about the customs house, I should say, is there's this massive area down below. There's this massive cafe area where everyone's just hanging around and sessioning. So if you don't want to go to a convention, maybe uh, if you don't want to go to a lecture, maybe it's not your bag. Um, or, you know, you, you, you don't want to go to the dealers. You can hang out down there. And a lot of people were doing that and sessioning and chatting to each other and talking to each other. And as again, it comes back to that vibe that the South Tyneside Convention have created, which is absolutely amazing. But the, um, uh, the Sunday was just as good. Uh, now, uh, you know, as I say, I'm not going to go into individual lectures. I love them all, but it was more lectures. I will say two things about the Sunday. First of all, uh, you know how how um, important it is for me to 
see new people coming into magic, especially younger magicians. They are the future of magic. And, and every time I go to the YMC and I see Ryland's friends, I'm blown away by their skill and their ability. Uh, you know, I, I, I could sit here naming names like Jack Ranger Walsh and Ar Arabella Crawford and Rafferty Coop and, um, you know, Joseph Westbury and, and th 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 Jess Howard, th this goes on and on. I could talk about those incredible names at the YMC until I'm blue in the face. Um, but what I loved about what the, uh, uh, what the South Tyneside convention did is they had on the Sunday, a couple of, um, a couple of kind of lectures in a separate area specifically for young magicians they had one for uh sort of kids up to the age of 11 and then they had another one for sort of 11 to 15 year olds i think it was and uh and that was amazing i didn't see the first one uh but i did go to the second one and you know they, they'd arranged me to do a lecture and teach a couple of tricks and do a q a and they had marvin burglass there as well uh, i will give a big shout out to marvin marvin was there with the mind hacker uh, Tony was there and um, they, th th Marvin Burglass is just the perfect president for the Magic Circle. He really is. He carries himself off brilliantly. He represents the Magic Circle in such a great way. We are so lucky to have Marvin Burglass as the president of the Magic Circle. He doesn't need it. And the fact that he loves magic is just amazing because, you know, we get to have him as president and I hope he's president for a very long time. Um, but Marvin was there and it was great that they'd organized this day, uh, this this event for the, for the young magicians with me and Marvin, um, you know, and uh, 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 who else was there? Graham Shaw was there, uh, Martin was there obviously. And it was it was just a fantastic, you know, watching how enthusiastic they are about magic. There were some people there, some young magicians there that had only been getting into, only got into magic like six months ago. And, and their skills were great. And it's wonderful that Magic Box and the South Tyneside Magic Convention are, are really kind of helping them progress in magic. They are the future of magic. And, and it was great to see this youth event. It really was. And I think more... Uh, more more conventions should do that. And I know that um, Vanishing Ink do with the session and with Magifest, which is really great. But I think that more people should be doing that as well. Um, but yeah, that, so, and, and talking about the young magicians, I, I forgot to mention this, but on the Friday night family show, uh, the first half was closed by, I think it's, is it the Neptune Club uh, or the Merlin Club, the Neptune Club, which is a, a sort of a club for young magicians up in South Tyneside, organised by uh, Magic Box. And they closed the first half by having all of those young magicians on stage doing some incredible magic culminating in a really great performance of the cube wall. And, you know, it's difficult to stand on that stage and perform in front of people. And they did it so well, they were delivering quite complicated lines of dialogue and they were doing it as if they'd been on that stage for years. So, you know, big, 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 my hat is off to Magic Box, South Tyneside Council, South Tyneside Magic Convention, anybody that's really been putting the effort in to help these young magicians move forward. Yeah, seriously, well done. Um, and yeah, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about on Sunday is there was a VIP event. I couldn't get there because unfortunately I had an 11 year old with me and uh, he needed to go to school on the Monday. So we needed to get him back and a five hour drive is quite a long drive. So we needed to get him back at a reasonable time. So we kind of left around about three o'clock in the afternoon. Didn't see the VIP event, but I believe it was Martin... Uh, Daniels and uh, Debbie McGee, which uh, would have been amazing. I wish I was there. So uh, what can I say about this convention? Well, I can say that this was amazing. I was blown away. I go to a lot of magic conventions. Me and Ryland go to a lot of magic conventions. We're very lucky that a lot of people are asking Ryland to perform on a gala show and asking me to do lectures, and I love doing that. But even if I'm not, I'm, I still just love going to as many magic conventions as I can. And obviously, nothing compares to Black. Blackpool. Blackpool is its own thing. It's just in another league of its own. But when you look at all the other conventions that are, that are, that are put on, especially over here in the UK, I have to be honest, I think this is one of the best that I've ever seen. It's friendly. It's fun. There's a great range of lecturers. There's a great show. Uh, everybody's super amazing. And it's so well organized. Now, I'm telling anybody who's watched this video and made it through to the end, if you get a chance to go to the South Tyneside Magic Convention, 
please do so because you're going to be very, very pleasantly surprised. I'm definitely going back, even if I'm never asked to lecture ever again. And, you know, normally people only ask me once and I turn up and they're not going to ask me again. Uh, even if I don't get asked to lecture again, even if Ryland doesn't get asked to uh, perform again, I'm still going to uh, be attending because I had so much fun at this convention. It's very easy for me to get to by train or by car, and I will definitely be back again. So, this was your review of the South Tyneside Magic Convention. I'm giving it 100%, a double thumbs up from me and Matt and Ryland. And for anybody who I met while I was there, uh, thank you so much for being so friendly. Thank you so much for being so nice. I really appreciate it. I had an absolute blast. My son had an absolute blast. Uh, Matt had an absolute blast. And yeah, thoroughly recommended. And I would seriously consider going back again. Uh, well, no, I wouldn't consider it. I'll do it. So uh, anybody who's watching this that you want to go to a really fun magic convention that doesn't cost the earth. You know, uh, I talked about the Session Magic Convention, which is very good. I'm probably not going next year because it ends up being so expensive. It's not really Vanishing Ink's fault. It's just it's in London. It's like, you know, 20 quid for a pint. Um, uh, this is this is up north. It's very, very reasonably priced and definitely worth attending. So there you go, guys. That's another video in the bag. A bit of a different one today. A review of a magic convention. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, you want to see more videos like this. All you got to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. And also, don't forget that if you want to join the Netrix, which is my online streaming platform, Platform for magicians, you can do so by going to www.thenetrix.com. That's www.thenetrix.com. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you again. My name's Craig, and this is Magic TV. Mm -hmm.